ladies and gentlemen, this is Trisha with Insectopia, and I am here looking at a whole nother insect. <coughs> um, we are looking at what we call a primitive weevil. Now, um, many of you out there, if you are hanging out with me or if you've been with me in the past, you likely know what a weevil is, right? Weevils are just, um, they're a family of beetle. They generally have long snouts up, a, up along the front of their head. Let me turn that volume down a moment. So, weevils are going to have really, really long snouts. Well, at least most of them. There are some weevils, um, in like, um, there are some weevils that their family is, um, Curculionidae. It's, they're still the family of weevils, but they're kind of short horned weevils. Those guys do exist. There's a subfamily of them. But what we're looking at here is not in, is, it's not what we would consider a true weevil. It's not in Curculionidae, all right? Curculionidae is our scientific name for the family of weevils. This is what we call a primitive weevil, and the family on this one is different. This is a Brentidae, all right? Um, when we are looking at the differences in between a Brented or a primitive weevil versus a Curculionid or um, a common weevil, um, we're looking at the antenna. So the average weevil, all of the Curculionids, they're going to have elbowed antenna here, and Brenteds are going to have straight antenna. So that's a pretty easy way to tell them apart. Um, so if you see a beetle with a long snout, you can say, okay, it is in, oh, this is a new one for us, it is in the super family Curculionoidea. Well, that's a fun word to say. Uh, it's in the super family Curculionoidea. <laughs> um, and that means that it is either in the family Curculionidae or Brentidae. See, these families are closely related, but they are not the same. And so at least in beetles, we not only have order, family, tribe, genus, species, we have order, superfamily, family, subfamily, uh, tribe, genus, species. And the super family that Brentids are in is Curculionoidea. Um, so, uh, it just means that it's that, that those two families are linked and they both have that long snout like part. And then when you want to go further and actually identify it to family, you're going to have Brentidae. Now, I haven't identified this specimen further than Brented, um, but I also haven't tried very hard. So it's definitely possible that um, we could identify this one. I bet you that it's in the subfamily Brentini because that's one of the larger subfamilies. And to me, it looks like, all right, maybe in the tribe Brentini. I'm looking at... Um, I'm referencing some images on Bug Guide to see if I can maybe find our, to maybe find our friend here. Um, see this weevil, okay. All right. Hmm. You know what? It may be the oak timber worm, Aranoides minutus. Let me go ahead and look up info for this one. Now, normally I do not like to, normally I don't like to um, identify specimens just based on pictures. Picture IDing isn't very great. Um, but this one does have a fairly unique shape. And I do believe that when we zoom in on the, um, on the elytra, there is going to be some speckling or spotting in those regions. So this one also looks fairly, 
um, widespread across the east. Now, this says that generally they're found underneath um, the bark of fallen oak tree oak trees. Um, and admittedly, uh, I think that um, this specimen I collected in the car, which is really funny. So it likely came into my black light, and then it got wrapped up with my sheet, is my guess. And these guys do come into lights. So, um, if I was to take a long shot and, and pick a species for this friend, I would probably call it Aranoides, um, Aranoides minutus, or the oak timber worm. Um, but that would just be most, that's like, uh, that's, I guess, um, best guess scenario based on pictures. And then we, um, but I definitely know it's a Brented or that, um, the Brented. So let's see, I'm going to write Oak Timber Worm. Aranoides. And then we're going to be able to, um, we're going to be able to measure our specimen so that we can see exactly how long he is. And then we're just going to start sketching him together. I'm pretty excited about zooming in and checking him out. Um, I do want to just write Brented over here because this is the one that we are sure of. And I do believe that's the correct species. All right, let's see. So we're going to measure our specimen here from the front of the Oh, from the front of the rostrum. That's a fun word. Um, rostrum is gonna, I believe that we call this a rostrum. Uh, this, um, the snout part. Yes. So, this, um, this snout is what we call the rostrum. So, if I was measuring from the front of the rostrum all the way to the back of the elytra, this specimen is 1.28 centimeters long. So, it's not a very large specimen, and now that we have our measurement, we're going to be able to um, zoom in. And the lighting will be better once we've zoomed in. And even now, when we change the focus just a little bit, you can see the differentiation in color in, that, in the elytra back there. So right here, you can see where there's the dark and then the lighter spotting on the elytra, which is one of those things that was keying me into that guy, um, along with the shape of his, oops, along with the shape of the femurs are really awesome. Um, so... I haven't keyed him out for sure, but I have, you know, kind of like picture ID'd him. Now, let's see. I'm going to start by rotating my paper sideways. He's a nice long beetle, so I want to make sure I've got enough space for him and his snout. Um, welcome. If you're joining me, feel free to ask any questions. Um, we're about to get sketching. Now, let's see. Our head is right around here. And what I'm going to do when I start sketching my head, you'll notice his head is actually kind of tiny. Um, right around here, this is where his head ends. And then I'm just going to create this kind of shorter D shape. And then I'm going to add the rostrum to it. Because, I, um, because freehanding this whole piece is going to be more difficult than um, sketching this short the short head, kind of like this, with one flat end and a rounded end, and then connecting the rostrum to it, or that nice long snout. And then when we come back, we'll be able to fix any of the angles and make sure that it connects all in the right spot. So when we're doing this first sketch, we're just making sure that everything is approximately the correct size and um, giving ourselves some shapes to work with when we zoom for when we zoom in. Now, the other thing that I do like to do is add um, at least the length of the antenna to the front of the head so that once we're zoomed in, we can kind of tell, um, we can kind of tell how long this antenna should be. So let's see, um, right, we're going to start right above the rostrum and we're going to go out and wave up a little bit. 
and the antenna do go a little bit further than the rostrum. So something like that I'm going to be happy with. So we've got the head mostly figured out at least for our um at least for our first sketch, our light lines. Now, uh this first segment of the thorax. This is this next segment back. It is actually kind of long. Um we call it the pronotum. At least that's what we call the top of it. So right around here, this first segment of the thorax is the pronotum. And um, it's also where the first pair of legs are connected. So if we kind of start here, this is going to be, I can even measure it. Let's go ahead. These aren't going to be the correct numbers, but at least to scale, we'll know how many times. So if I measure from the front of the head to the end of the rostrum, and then I put that measurement, yeah, that's what it was looking like to me. So if you match the length of the head and the rostrum, that's going to be approximately the length of the pronotum. Don't pay attention to those numbers. The numbers weren't correct, but the line has the ability to show us ratios. So there we go. If I take this and this and I kind of double it over here, I can give myself this little light line. That will be fine. And then, nice and long, um, I am just going to connect it kind of like this where I do have a little bit of a gap um, in between the head and the pronotum, um, or at least the, this little lip here. Um, and then we want it to, let's see, it's not exactly right yet. Um, I want it to, on the top, arch just a little bit. That's looking even better already. Um and then the bottom. All right, so that's going to be my first segment of the thorax or the pronotum. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, give myself some stick legs so I know right about where the legs are going to be connected. It's right around here, right? So um, if I take my legs, they're probably going to come out forward like this and then come down and then out. And he's got some pretty kind of shorter legs, so don't make them too, uh, too incredibly long. Now, um, this next segment, what looks like the rest of the body, is actually the thorax and the abdomen. If I scooch it all the way back here, what you're looking at on the top are the wings. And all wings of the four wings, or the front wings of beetles, are what we call elytra. So these are the elytra here, and... Um, when we zoom in, you're going to be able to tell that they do have, um, is that they do have these, uh, these lighter spots. Oh no, I'm out of tea though. Oh no, Marley, you can go and get tea. I'm sure that you'll be able to catch up. We're just in the very, very beginning of the, of the sketchy phase. All right, so I want to kind of compare the length of my head, rostrum, and pronotum to the length of the elytra, because I'm wondering if we can just double the insect's body size again. So I'm just going to scooch it back a little bit so we can get this guy refocused so we can see the whole specimen. And I'm thinking if I measure from the end of the pronotum to the end of the rostrum, and then I put this line over top of the elytra. Oh, man. Look at that. All right. So we are pretty much the elytra. If it's not exactly the length of the pronotum head and rostrum, it might be just an itty, itty bit shorter. But it's negligible. You could pretty much double your specimen size. So, um, if you're, if you're sketching with a grid or, um, a ruler, um, you'll actually be able to just count from here to here and kind of multiply it. I'm going to go ahead and eyeball it on my paper. So I've got the end of the rostrum to the end of the pronotum, and I'm going to make sure that that scooch is over. And you know what? I believe we're going to be going to the very end of my paper again, but we will have enough space to do the whole thing, I believe. So... The elytra is going to come up a little bit. It's going to project up a little bit off of that pronotum. And then they're going to be mostly a, a straight horizontal line until you get to the very end when it starts to slant down 
um, and round out. Now, um, what we're sketching here are actually the elytra. So if we come down not all the way and pull it back, that line is going to meet just a little bit before the uh, pronotum ends. And then we're going to also add a little bit of the bottom of the abdomen here. Um, what we can see, these bottom segments of the abdomen are what we call sternites. Um, because they're on the bottom or the sternum. Now, the second pair of legs is connected to the second segment of the thorax right around here. And he's going to go back kind of like this. Kind of these cute little short legs for our little Brented. And then, um, funny enough, you see how far back his third pair of legs are? Um... These are still on the thorax. So this beetle just has a super duper itty bitty short abdomen. Um, so let's see. If that's my th second thoracic segment, looks like probably this is going to be my third thoracic segment. The leg projects from the back of it, comes up, and is going to be only a little bit over top of the abdomen here. So that is going to give us a fairly stable little beetle. Is the focus weird? Um, I'm going to zoom in and then we'll be able to focus better. Um, the focus is a little funky on this guy when I was zoomed out just because um, black Black insects, these darker insects, tend to be a little bit more difficult, I, th I think, to get everything focused right. Oh, look how cute he is. I was really hoping to get the head and the antenna all into one shot so that we could do it all at the same time. Let's see if the focus is going to work or if we're going to have to zoom in further. Eh, this might work. Let me know. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a reflection thing. Um, you've never heard of this family. Yeah, so, um, exactly. So this is a, this isn't like an, it's an oddball family of weevils. They're not too common. And when I found this one, I was really excited, although a little bit sad that I'm not exactly sure where exactly it came from because it was riding around in the car with me on a road trip that I had driven across like three states. And so I'm not sure exactly which state I picked it up in. And I was black lighting every night. So these guys do come to lights at night. Um, I'm just not sure which night it came. So I have the date and um, EX on my label standing for like where exactly I collected it. Um, EX in the car. <laughs> it made me laugh. <clears throat> All right. So, let's see. Now that we have, um, now that we're nice and zoomed in, we're going to be able to kind of round off these, um, these spaces here because I had originally um, just given myself this kind of D shape and then added the rostrum to it. Oh, I haven't spelled rostrum for you, and I think this is a new one for these beetles. So, there you go. Um... And I'm going to get my sketch a little closer to the camera so that we can see better. Aha! Much better. All right. So here we are with our head and our rostrum and where our antenna are going to be connected. And all I want to do is kind of connect this rostrum evenly to my head here. So I'm going to come down something like this and then like this. And I'm going to erase all of these inside lines. And that is going to give us the head shape that we would like. I'm going to keep these lines nice and light until I get my eyes and the other things kind of up here and ready. So let's see. Got that nice long rostrum. Now, sometimes people say, this is a crazy weevil, right? Where is its mouth part? 
Its mouth part is not down here. This is not a nose. This is actually um, an expanded piece for their chewing mouth parts, and their mouth parts are on the very, very end of this snout. <laughs> All right. So if we were to zoom in, we can see the mandibles of chewing mouth parts right here on the very, very end. And we might do that once we get our eyes in some of the larger pieces. I'll, oops, there's the domino cockroach. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. He poked up. He poked his head out. All right. Um, let's see. You can see that these compound eyes take up most of the lateral, most of this side of our head here. So I'm going to give us uh, some fairly large compound eyes. And I think that's the going to be my first, um, my first line that I start off with. All right. Um, I kind of want to zoom in. Sorry. I was really hoping to be able to sketch. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to start off with these lines right here. I'm pretty happy how um, how my head and kind of the bottom of this snout looks. So that's where I'm going to start, especially because that top part is going to include my antenna. So this will give me a basis. There we go. So we've got the bottom side of our rostrum here. And then we're coming down this way. Now, funny enough, the rostrum is this, like, expanded part, and you'll see that there's this little bit of a, uh, of a wraparound. Um, the rostrum sometimes, so it's depending on, depending on the weevil you're looking at, sometimes these guys will almost appear like the rostrum is two pieces, or that it looks like it's kind of, there's like a, a scar or a fusion down the center. Um, I'm not sure if, if that's just from, I'm not sure what that's from, but this guy appears to have it. So you can see like right along the front of the eye, the rostrum kind of comes up like this, is a little bit higher than the head, and then comes all the way down. So that is how I would like to sketch my rostrum here. Um, and we will be zooming in on the end of that rostrum because I want to show you the chewing mouth parts. They're actually kind of cool. All right. Now, the antenna, I believe, are connected to the rostrum. But let's go ahead and zoom in and check the base of the antenna here. All right. Oh no! On the antenna? I'm gonna have to zoom out and check. Uh, right around here, this is where our antenna are gonna be connected, and they are connected to this like rounded region, so I'm gonna be creating my antenna socket right around this area and coming out from here. This first segment that we are looking at, that's what we say is the scape. All right, it's coming out this way. And now I'm going to try and follow this line as best as I can as I'm sketching our friend here. So this is our scape, the first segment on the antenna. And I'm going to have to go and check and count my antenna segments. Um, Marley says there are 11 or 12. Admittedly, I haven't counted yet. They kind of wrap around each other, funny enough. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, it's probably gonna be easier for me to count looking through the microscope. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are eleven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. Marley, you're gonna have to take one of those off. But, you know, oh, I hope you're not drawing with a pen. I don't mind those. Alrighty. Um, so, here we are. I'm going to get you one step away from the camera. I keep bumping it, and I don't want to bump it. There we go. All right. So from after, after the scape, we have the pedestal that looks a lot like the flagellum segments, 
And then we have, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine kind of roundy segments. And the last segment, segment 11, looks like one of our raindrop shapes. So let's see. One, two, yeah, this is okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that last segment is that nice little raindroppy segment. And I believe that there are, admittedly, I think that my antenna could have been longer. That's okay. I think he's cute. All right. I want to zoom in to the end of the mouth part so that you can see this mandible here. Oh, like Arnold said, pencils are for babies. Fair enough. So I guess you just get to scribble a little bit. Mark one of them off. This is as far as I can get zoomed in, so I'm not going to be able to really show you what this looks like. Unless I flip it over to the dark side. <laughs> Let's see the dark side. Was I? That light was on. Oops. Um, sometimes my camera focuses different when it's dark against dark, but it's going to be too dark. We tried. All right, so... Um, I'm just going to have to describe it to you. Right here at the end, there is this little triangular segment. Um, and it's like a little mandible. And what you're seeing from this side is one mandible going away from you. And then what looks like that kind of ridged thing is the mandible coming back up at us. So you can see both of them. They've got these little chewing mouth parts way up here at the end of the rostrum. Um, I also believe we have sensory hairs off of the edges of these antennal segments. And I like to give, um, especially these sensory hairs on the bottom, I like to give them a little shout out. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some hairs in here and cross hatch in my eye so that it looks compound. And I think we're doing something. Can I Google image search it? Yes, I believe this species that we are looking at is Aeronotus minutus. Um, it's the oak timber worm. And in any of the images online, they look a little bit more red. They look a little bit brighter. But I j think that that's just what he used to look like. And he may have dar darkened a little bit over time. Um, we are looking at a specimen that's at least two years old. So it's possible that he's darkened just a little bit. Plus... Um, I believe if we look close enough, we're going to see some uh, colors um, and spots on the elytra. He's so shiny. And you can see, even from this view, he looks a little bit red. And it's funny because when I first pulled this specimen out and I was seeing some of these like little spots on the pronotum here, they almost look like little water droplets. But I promise 
The specimen is not wet. That is just, um, that's, um, structuring, uh, some type of structure on the exoskeleton. I'm not sure what we would call that. Um, I would call the this beetle glabrous, G-L-A-B-R-O-U-S, which means shiny. Online, some look like a mimic with big mandibles like a tiger beetle. I don't know if any of the, uh, I don't know if any of the, uh, um, the weevils really look like tiger beetles. Um, I wonder if I, no. It's just so hard. Even if, even if we looked head on, oh, I didn't mean, know that I was still on. Even if we look head on and we focus just there at the end of the uh, mandibles, it's not really gonna give us much. segment the name of your firstborn son oh that's funny have huge mandibles let me go look really cool all right so now we know that this is a lady because she has that nice long thin um rostrum and yeah those males with those huge mandibles i can see now why you said uh why you said ground beetle or tiger beetle um, they've, they've got, they're very intense. And the ladies' mouth parts are the exact same. They're just itty, itty, bitty, tiny. They still have those large, they still have mandibles like that, that kind of meet in the center and chew. They're just at the very, very end at the tip of the rostrum, rather than at, um, with a shorter rostrum. The males even look like they have a shorter rostrum. If I saw that male out in the wild without the female, I don't know if I would have put it in this family. That's so cool. All right. Thank you, Marley. It is sexual dimorphism. That is exactly what it is. Could it be a mimic? Um, I'm not sure what it would be mimicking. I mean, it definitely could be a mimic, right? Um, I'm not here to say, no, it's definitely not a mimic. But it is sexual dimorphism where you've got the differences between the males and the females. And I only have a female, so I don't even have a male to look at under my microscope. And it makes me want to set up more black lights around oaks and see if I can find one. Um, so something that I'm noticing about our pronotum here is that we do have this, um, we do have this extra sclerite here. So we've got a line here that almost makes our beetle look like he's got a little bit of a neck before the pronotum. I'm not sure what this segment would be called. Um, I don't know if we would ever even refer to it, but we are going to sketch it. So um, the angle comes this way on our head, and then we're just going to round out this little bit of a neck part with it nice and short up at the top of the head and then a little wider the bottom that's also going to give us like that upward facing head type look 
All right, very good. Now, um, from here, we're going to be adding our pronotum. I'm pretty happy with this arch here, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick that middle line and throw it on here. Now, um, from here... Now, from here, um, I'm going to be looking at the end of our pronotum, and it almost looks like dual ridged. Like, it has one ridge here, um, and then, and I'm going to arch, um, arch it in just a little bit, um, and then it has the second arch that kind of sits next to it, so I'm just going to give that little detail, like here. Um, and then we can actually see the coxal, we can see the coxy from here, the coxa from here. So right around here, um, that little circular guy that the femur is connected into, that's the coxa or the hip bone. So if we are sketching our friend, we're going to come in just a little bit and then we are going to, let's see, I kind of want to follow the pronotum first. So I'm going to arch it up and then come down like this. Okay. And then I'm going to add our coxa, which is going to be rounded kind of like these. All right, so we've got some coxa, we've got that pronotal shaping here, and now I'm just going to finish this solid line, and we're going to get to connecting this leg. Now, I think that I have this leg in just a slightly different spot than it needs to be, so I'm just going to erase it now so that we can sketch this where it needs. So the femur is actually going to be connecting right here to this little circle. And um, it starts, look how fun the femur is. It, it's so narrow and then it comes out, it reminds me of a chicken leg. <laughs> Um, it comes out and it gets really bulbous and then at the knee it gets narrow again. So if we're looking at him here, he's going to start kind of narrow and then kind of widen out. And it does look like it, it's bulbous not just on one side but kind of on both sides. Oh man, let's see if we can get this right. And then he has this kind of that knee shape that makes him, makes it get a little bit more narrow. Yeah, because I am chatting with you, ladies and gentlemen, and sketching and working with my microscope, I don't have the ability to Google image other, uh, to Google search other images, but you can, and I definitely suggest doing it if you would like to see the specimen from more angles or the like, because this is, um, I just don't have the ability to do it also. So here we go. There's a big, wide femur. I'm going to turn our specimen so we can see that tibia better, because I think that the tibia is really cool, too. We're even just going to, I think we're going to turn the specimen to the other side because this tibia, I believe, is a little bit easier to see. Whoa. Okay. So the femur, where, oh, look at those beautiful golden hairs. All right, so we are almost to a point where the entire thing can be on one plane, but we are not quite there. So I'm going to kind of split the focus a little bit and leave it right around here. Um, now that we are zoomed in and looking at it from this angle, you can see that right around here where the inside of the femur comes in, there is actually a little spine, um, a little... Um, projection. I want to call it a spine. There's a little spine here. He's so cute. All right. Now the tibia also has this very unique shape where the front end, let's see, is S, has a, has a little bit of an S curve. 
And then the back side, um, it does have a two-pronged, um, it's kind of like two-pronged down here at the bottom. You see how it comes, it gets wider at this portion, and then it comes down and it has this point here. It has that same point on the other side, so it's almost, it's almost kind of shaped like, like this. Um, but you can only see one from when, from when we're sketching it from a lateral point of view. So uh, we've got that little art shape on the tibia. And then on the inside, it appears to have right here in the center, it kind of comes out. And funny enough, I do believe that this little... I don't know what to call it, the flange here, the the tibia is not like flat across like this. It's more curved like this. And so when the beetle um, pulls his leg in and he's got this femur here and the tibia that's kind of curved, the tibia actually surrounds or encircles the femur just a little bit. Um, and that's why, and that's where you can see the, um, those two little, uh, the end of the tibia would kind of encircle the femur when it closed. I always like to give these words up here, um, especially as I'm using them, just in case you would like to be able to spell them. And I put them all up at one time. <laughs> All right, there you go. So you've got this tibia and it's coming down and then it makes that really cool spine that we were just talking about. And the spine is actually on the other side too. So if you wanted, you could kind of create this kind of like little shaded spine. It's going to come up and fold in. Um, now, you're pretty sure your leg does that? Okay. <laughs> uh, and it also has those pretty golden hairs, but let's see. Four four beetles, I believe. Actually, five five five. Uh, I'm gonna double check that for you right now. Yes. So, um, when we are, I'm gonna refocus this just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. This guy, he he's just a little small, so sometimes the smaller guys are a little bit trickier to get all of the images in. But here we go. Um, the first three tarsal segments, one, two, three. Um, well, we're gonna go two. These first two tarsal segments are short and rectangular. Um, they fit in nicely with one another and they have these like friction pads on the bottom of them to help them walk. This third segment here, it looks just like a basic rectangular segment, but if you were to look at it from above, it, it looks like this. It's kind of heart shaped. The fourth segment is really itty bitty tiny, but from this angle, we can actually see it. It's right here. It's this little piece, and it's almost like a little segment that's coming out from in between. So if this was tarsal segment three, tarsal segment four kind of comes up in between those two pieces and just ends really short. And then five is this nice, lo nice long one with the claws. Air tripping on drawing the male next to the female. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, that's really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, uh, <laughs> that's funny. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch this uh, and, and attempt to get, get these guys all down. Uh, so the first, oh, yeah, and we call it, it is a 555 tarsal formula. All of the tarsi are going to look like this. Um, we call them apparently 444 tarsal formula because so many people, while they're counting the tarsal segments, don't count this itty itty bitty one in between the toes. And there are so many entomologists and so many people who knew better getting it wrong that we just now call it apparently 444 because when you look at it, that's what's apparent to the naked eye. But then when you, um, 
Uh, but then when you zoom in, it has the actual 555, which is why we call it that way. And you'll see it written that way also, like, in texts and in keys. Apparently 444. <laughs> so funny. Makes me laugh. Because, you know, in science, you always think about, like, I always, I always figure that science is going to be, like, the most accurate or, like, um, very, very a distinct wording. And when it's apparently, that just makes me laugh. All right. One, two little rectangular segments. The third segment is, from the lateral point of view, it's mostly just going to look like a rounded segment. But it is kind of heart-shaped if you were to look at it from above. Then you've got this other one that comes up just like this from in between the toes. All right. One, two, three, four, and then five is going to come out. And I'm going to make four just a little bit bigger. Let's see. Actually, what happened is that three needs to be bigger so that four can get there. So three is going to be around about like this. Yep. Four. And then... Five. He's so cute. Look at that crazy leg. Oh, man. I think he's going to be one of my favorites. Okay. All right. Let's move on to these elytra. So that tiny black thing is the fourth tarsal segment? Yeah, right here. Um, I can't go to my microscope program and zoom in on the actual program even further. It's not going to make the... Yeah, it's right there. This little... This guy. Right here. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's tarsal segment number four. <laughs> So the elytra have this really cool um, striping on them. We're gonna call these. We're gonna call these striations. We're hopefully gonna get it in better focus too. became it just an itty itty bit injured from actually pinning it so if you were curious about what's going on um if you're curious about what's going on right around here where this black piece is coming out that's a little bit of the exoskeleton that got pushed away when the pin was going through and that's something that happens sometimes and it's not really easy to like fix or anything so we just leave it kind of the way it is but naturally this is going to be a very flat rounded space that is only there because the pin pushed through the exoskeleton um that's the same with right around here there's a little bit of like a jut up but that's fine um and now that we have a little bit better focus you can see the very um um the very uh i guess i want to say the gentle differentiations in color it's not the the there are those light coloration changes i believe that the darker areas those black areas used to be more red and those lighter spots used to be brighter so i think the whole thing used to be just a little bit brighter but we got this happening <laughs> happens to vampires too good times All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, just let me know. I think we just had a couple more people join us. 
All right. So, um, we're this is the beginning of the elytra. All right. These are the first pair of wings for our beetles here, and there is a little bit of a of a shoulder here, but it isn't huge. So I'm going to actually round that out just a little bit, so it's less of a corner here um, than I had originally sketched. So I'm going to round that piece out. Now, it is pretty much all the way flat most of the way. So I am happy about um, darkening this line here. Let's uh, zoom out so that we can see the entirety of the elytra at one time. Hopefully we get to keep all the brightness. Sometimes when you are, here we go, here we go, here we go. Perfect. Oh. It's funny because um, you only have to move the specimen an itty, itty, bitty bit, and then it'll, uh, it moves like a whole lot. <laughs> All right, so we get all the way to the very end, and we round it out. Um, the end of the elytra is not like is not um, a very hard angle. We're gonna make sure that that is super duper round here at the end, and we're just gonna come here and round it out a little bit. I'm even going to no, I don't want to shorten it. I was going to shorten my elytra just a little bit, but I think that I would need to make sure that it stays long so that we do have room for those. Um, so that we have room for the abdomen. All right, and I'm gonna be coming all the way, if you see where I had the abdomen line, I'm coming and arching it all the way down to the abdomen, and then I'm going to bring it kind of back up a little bit. So you can see that the bottom of these elytra is not exactly a straight line. I wonder what that, how that changes their flight, because the bottom side of the elytra are also going to be the um, the portions that are forward facing when they're flying. So there's a little bit of a wave here between the second and third pairs of legs and then it comes and meets. Um, all of these long stripes on our elytra are called striations. I've got that word written up here. Um, and you can come along and just add these if we wanted to count the striations, I believe that we could. From the center, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-ish. I'm going to count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do believe that from the center to the edge, there are eight striations right here at the widest point. Now... Um, here, you'll notice that some of those striations kind of come together in little Ys, so you don't have eight at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and just give my guy eight, um, just like this. Let's see. So something along those lines where you've got these long striping patterns. And then if you really wanted to get into it, you could always go ahead and, and color in those, um, those splotches. All right. Now we are going to give ourselves the bottom of this and get our legs in, and get our legs in here. So let's see. Uh, the abdomen is going to come away from the elytra right here where it kind of arches up. So this is where our abdomen is going to start, and we're just going to make it nice and rounded all the way to the bottom of this pronotum. And then when we zoom in, we'll be able to add any of the coxal segments. I think that... Let's see... go. 
sometimes it is a itty bitty bit tricky to get these guys at the correct angle, especially with their legs a little bit wonky. But I think that this is going to work for our middle leg here. Yes. All right, so our femur still has this, um, I'm going to point out the femur and then focus down to the tarsal segments. So our femur here still has this same really pretty arch here. I don't believe that it has a spine like our femur from our front leg. And our tibia is not spined like the front leg. The tibia comes out naturally, gets a little bit wider and then ends, like a tibia of many other insects that we see. Now you can see the one, the two, this is that third segment that's kind of rounded at the end because it's one of those heart-shaped segments. Um, the fourth segment of the tarsi, you can't really see very well from this angle, but that's why it's apparently 444. And then you've got this fifth tarsal segment with these two tarsal claws here at the end. All right, so I'm going to just uh, give myself a, a little bit of a coxal segment uh, uh, here. So I'm just going to take a little guy and kind of round him out here. And that's where I'm going to be connecting my femur to. It just gives, the, it just gives a little bit of uh, distinction. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So our femur starts nice and narrow, comes out and gets kind of wide. And we are going to have to erase all of what's inside of this friend here. So that should be interesting. Give me a minute as we figure as I figure out the shape. I'm gonna erase some of this in here so that I can see it a little bit better. Maybe what we need to do is refocus so that we can see the femur. Yeah, this is gonna help me. It really is a pretty bug. I have to agree with you, and that's why. So if if it was any other insect that I didn't know where it came from, like if I don't have a locality, a lot of times I won't even collect them because I collect for my, like a scientific research collection, right? And, um, but now I collect also to teach and sketch with, so I am so glad I was able to keep it. But there was a minute I considered I considered not because I don't know exactly its locality. All right, so we've got that femur here. The tibia is going to be coming down, and um, it is not an incredibly long tibia. It's just going to probably reach a little bit past the body here. This beetle sits pretty low to the ground. In fact, you can find them underneath bark. So a lot of times they are not, they don't even have a whole lot of room to walk around. I love the pretty golden hairs on the bottom of the tarsal segments. Ugh. No, don't go that far. I just wanted it. There. That's what I get for touching it. That's good. Okay. All right, so the end of the tibia does kind of bulb out just a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that instead of it ending kind of narrow, it does bulb out just a little bit. And then we have one tarsal segment that's more rectangular, two tarsal segment. Second is, is kind of rectangular. And then... <clears throat> And admittedly, these are probably going to be a little flatter because the tarsal segments are, the first and second tarsal segments are the ones with these, uh, these golden, um, hairs that are going to be to help with, uh, to help with, like, friction and holding on and stuff. Walking on things. All right, one, two. Third one is nice and rounded. Fourth one comes up, 
from in between the two heart pieces and five comes out with two claws. Oh, he's so cute. All right, there is some space in between the second pair of legs and the third pair of legs. So when I, I'm gonna give ourselves this darker line here, we're gonna space that second leg from the third leg. So the second leg is up here, close to the beginning of the elytra. We're gonna come down. The second leg is probably going to connect right around here. So that's about halfway into the elytra. And I guess I could even just throw that measurement on that and see exactly where the, uh, let me see. It might be past the halfway point. Oh, okay. Bye, Marley. Thank you for hanging out and sketching with me. Oh, that would be awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my measurement here and see. I believe it is about halfway. So from the elytra to about where the uh, the where the hind leg starts, and then the hind leg. So it's actually a little bit closer than halfway. So that's actually probably about right. So on our specimen here, I'm gonna be adding the third leg right about where the second leg finishes up. And it looks like our third leg is also gonna have that femoral spine. Um, that's gonna be fun. of those tarsal segments because you can see how that heart-shaped one really works that you can see both the sides and how that um that little one comes kind of out between the toes but i was really hoping to also show this femur oh that's good this is good Okay, so we're going to just focus up here on the femur and the tibia and then sketch that one and then we're going to focus down to the tarsal segments. All right, so right around here, this is where our hind coccyx starts. And then the femur is going to be connecting out of it. I already have a little bit of an annotation as to kind of where this leg is going, but I do believe that I'll be able to kind of follow the middle leg, so I'm okay with getting rid of that for right now. Um, my femur does get wider again, so if we start here, the top of the femur is just going to be kind of one solid arch, and where the, uh, where the femur gets its, like, width and stuff is from the bottom side, so it's kind of connected more like this, where our hind femur does have this same kind of, um, this same kind of space here that the front femur did that has this kind of spine. And that spine is going to now be facing backwards because the leg is going backwards. So let's see. Let 
like that. And then we've got this tibia coming down. Now the tibia is closer to the second, to the middle leg than the, than the front leg, right? The front leg had this really awesome tibia that could like circle around the femur. And this guy is more like, it's more straight, but then it, um, it kind of widens out at the end. Kind of like a boot cut jeans. <laughs> All right, so we've got that taken care of. And then we've got these tarsal segments. Now, the tarsal segments are so cool on this guy. And um, these hind tarsal segments are going to be our best view of them, I believe. There we go. So you can see one and two are these rectangular, or I guess from this angle they could look very triangular. And then three is that heart-shaped. Four is the little itty-bitty nub coming out from the center. And five is the long one with the claws. Hi, Dr. Victor. No problem. Thank you for spending time with us today. I love hearing from new voices. All right, so we've got tarsal segment number one, tarsal segment number two. This third one, I call them heart-shaped, but they're nice and rounded. And they have this um, section that kind of surrounds this tarsal segment number four that everyone just tends to forget about, which is why we call these apparently 444 rather than just calling them 555 five, five as a tarsal formula. That just always makes me laugh. I need to get better at these guys, though. This is going to be all right. So uh, we've got the first two segments. We've got the third segment coming out like this, nice and rounded. The fourth one, short, and then this fifth one comes out, and it's got these claws on them. Tarsal claw number one. Tarsal claw number two. All right, so that is what my Brented looks like. So we've been looking at a female oak timber worm. Um, the species on her is Aranodes minutus. Um, and this is a female. There is sexual dimorphism in this, in this species where the males have these crazy huge mandibles and the females have this nice thin rostrum with the little itty bitty mandible, mi mini mandibles. So I am so happy. Oh, cheers from Ukraine. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Palm weevils are always funny. I have to agree. Now, Funny enough, oh, I, you know, bugs are what bring out my enthusiasm. I could talk about bugs for hours and hours and hours, and this is why I do this with you guys. Um, so palm weevils um, are actually a true weevil, so they are in the family Curculionidae. Um, when we are looking at palm weevils, the difference between curculionids and brentids are their antenna. So curculionids, um, the true weevils, or sometimes we call them the long-snouted weevils, but they also have short-snouted weevils in there. Um, they all have elbowed antenna versus these brentidae. We call them the, what's the, what's the common name? Primitive. We call them primitive weevils, and they have these long, straight antenna. All right, so that's how we're going to be able to tell apart the two families, but they're both in the same super family, right? So they're in Curculionoidea, which is just a fun word to say. Curculionoidea, um, which is the super family that includes all of the snouted beetles, the, uh, the curculionids and the brentids. All right, so that is our cute little friend here. Um, thank you, Dr. Victor and Marley, for joining me today. Um, you can always send me questions if you, if you don't know what an insect is. Um, <sighs> 
All right, so I am going to switch over to this page here. Now, if you have been sketching along with me today, I love to see everybody's sketches. So this is my sketch for the day. Um, you've got that nice long rostrum, the long antenna. I was absolutely loving the, uh, the shaping on the legs, especially on the femurs here. Um, I think that they're super cool. Um, now, if you know anybody in the ages of 5 to 8, 9 to 12, who really like insects, I also do uh, classes for students on a platform called OutSchool. I have my link in my description box. Um, here are some notes from a previous class. That is when we were talking about the green bottle fly. So we talk about their life cycle. Um, we were talking about how they taste with their feet and how they eat. Um, and the way that you tell apart the different instars of maggots. Um, so this is just something that I do with the kids and I absolutely love it. Um, thank you for subscribing. Anybody who has been commenting and chatting with me in the chat box, I know you have subscribed because that's a requirement to chat with me. And I always appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, um, this little PayPal box right here, it's a little QR code. There's also a description box below. Um, that's just in case you've had a great time today and you wanted to, you know, buy me a cup of coffee or send me a couple dollars to help support um, keeping my collection alive. It gives me, that those funds give me the ability to travel and to collect more bugs. They also give me the ability to buy pinning collection, pinning supplies, um, pins and styrofoam and boxes and drawers. Um, I love keeping my collection nice and organized. Um, and here, why don't, I have my silk moth sitting next to me and I love showing them off. So check this out. These are just a whole bunch of silk moths. There's the polyphemus, or over here. There's the polyphemus, and then the imperial moths. We've got a luna moth and a little io moth. I love them. Um, and I had pulled them out for some students, and so I'm going to have to put them back shortly. Um, but I really appreciate you joining me today. This is my email address. It's trisha at theinsectopia.com. And if you did sketch with me today, or you have a question, or you see a really cool bug anywhere in the world and you want to know what it is, I would love to help you identify it. Now, I'm not from... Um, I haven't, I have not traveled overseas yet, but I can definitely get insects down to family. I may not be able to identify your buggies all the way to species, but I can try. And I do know a good number of, um, other entomologists too. So if I get stuck on a buggy, I have people that I can ask. So I, uh, I really appreciate everybody hanging out with me today, learning a little bit about Brentids and being able to sketch them along with me. I love the sexual dimorphism in this species and I didn't know that it existed until today and we started looking up the pictures of the males online I figured I didn't know there was sexual dimorphism in the species so that made me happy um and I hope that there were things that you learned today that made you happy because that is my passion I like to teach people about the crazy things about insects that you may not realize because something that I've always loved is the fact that insects are itty 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 bitty tiny but they have such an impact on the planet and they are so diverse and the minute that you get an insect underneath the microscope I believe that you gain a better appreciation not only for insects but for our planet because these things exist all all over and I love it so um I am uh I'm I'm sending uh I'm sending positive vibes over to Ukraine I don't know what else I can do to help your support but if there's anything um Dr. Victor that uh that I could do uh let me know because that's a that's a rough one over there and um and and you guys all have our thoughts and prayers okay so I um I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your week. If there is anything that I can do, always let me know. My hashtag on Instagram, if you ever share posts on there, is at Insectopia2015. Um, I add the 2015 because that is when I um, it was when I established Insectopia and started posting YouTube videos. We've been doing this for a little bit of time, but um, the live streaming has been about a year and a half. 
So, um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. We will be live streaming again Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern or next week and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, I look forward to seeing you all there and have a wonderful week and stay buggy. Bye.